one and hey everybody Josh RV Nerd here at Bishop's RV in Junction City Oregon once again and once again with a little Sundance travel trailer I think this might be one of their very smallest um, this is the I think 221 RBS something like that I have seen so many numbers today I'm sorry if I got that jumbled look at the video description or look at the title of the video that's got the net the number in it anyway um, uh, I previously showed the 231 ML and said that's my personal favorite but when I asked around the, the local folks who work at this store every day I said what is the best Sundance floor plan they also, oh, 221, like, no question, like, that is the quintessential, you gotta see that Sundance right there, and I kind of get it, um, it's only 4,900 pounds in the short length, this is, this is half ton towable, I think, all day, um, you know, even in a little more adverse conditions, because sometimes half ton towability really depends on the terrain that you're trekking through, and I don't think you're gonna have that problem on this one, um, you know, it's an open concept, it's very similar to, say, like, a Cougar 22 RBS, but um, you might notice here a little bit different seating situation versus what most brands have gravitated toward on this. And I like different. I don't like everything always being the same. And I love it whenever a brand takes something and puts their own little half twist on it. Now, this is a, it reminds me a lot in application of something like an Alpha Wolf, where it's a really smart play, check the boxes model. Like we're carpetless, sweet. Uh, we're Asdell on the outside, sweet. Uh, Power awning, power uh, stabilizers, power tongue jack, triple suite, um, enclosed belly, you know, extended season capability. It has a lot of really good big hitter qualities, but without a lot of the fluff stuff that jacks up the weight and the price tag too awful bad, you know what I mean? It ain't flawless. It's got a couple things mm, I flat out don't like about it. I'll, I'll give you this one. No ladder. I don't really care for that. But some people prefer no ladder so that somebody doesn't try to climb up the back of the thing or whatever. Now, there's different strokes for different folks. You let me know what you like and dislike about this one, and let's compare some notes, shall we? So one of the things that really struck me in these as I've been going through uh, a couple Sundance campers is the lighting package. With that light-colored woodwork, oh, it just comes to life. It just start, it just, It just breathes life into it, and it opens it right up. Now, um, if you're a regular returning member of the RV Nerd Herd, then you have seen things like uh, the Rockwood 2205S, the Cougar 22 RBS, um, and a whole slew of similar models. They all do it a little bit differently. And that's what I want to showcase here is where the, what this one might offer you that the others don't. Uh, one of the things that I suspect is I, I, I'm guessing that this one here will be a little bit more uh, budget friendly as compared to something like a Rockwood or a Cougar, but still hitting a lot of big notes. Like the light colors and that vaulted ceiling make it feel nice and big in here. It's also easy cleaning. It's completely carpetless and that is a, uh, a marine woven uh, slide out floor. That is not carpet over there with no vents in the flooring. So, you know, serious check marks when it comes to the easy cleaning factor. Um, the, uh, the flooring, by the way, is not laminated. Uh, there are, uh, are, are some folks that get kind of spooked by that. Um, and you know what, in the, in the history of the RV industry, there's been a lot of really poorly done laminated floors. Let's just acknowledge that. There's also some extremely well done, heavy duty laminated floors. They are not all created equally. So uh, I, I like you to know that this is a 5 8 tongue and groove plywood floor. One of the other things I think is really awesome on this one, you might have probably noticed it by looking at it, but that is a true queen bed. That is a 60 by 80. They do a very different thing with their underbed storage, though. A lot of your heartlands and subsidiaries leave that just wide open. Um, now, North Trail doesn't do that. They don't, I don't know. They, they make a similar floor plan called a 21 RBSS. Now, all these random model numbers that I've just thrown at you, I don't expect you to, to speak the alphabet soup of the RV industry like I do. So I will leave links in the video description to see those similar models if you're wanting to do some comparison. Um, also, a link for pricing and availability. Now, this right here we got to talk about first and foremost. This really... Um, Kind of surprised me that they went this way. So for seating here, they went with, uh, it's a nice big U dinette, but they went with a knee knocker U dinette. Um, this is, I think, primarily, first and foremost, a solo or couples camping floor plan. I was really kind of surprised to see a dinette. Now, in the history of the RV industry, this is traditionally what a lot of people would have liked to have seen. And then over the last three or four years, 
Um, something like a hide bed or theater seating, a sofa of some variety has really become the predominant thing that you find in a layout like this. That would actually be my personal preference, but um, not everybody. Not everybody wants a sofa. I like that in uh, our organization we can give you options. So like if you look at that cougar or whatever, and you're like, eh, just, I, I want a dinette. Actually, I think cougar can option a dinette now that I say it, but you get the point. You, you, maybe you want something else. But when I went through the options list, I wasn't able to locate any other seating options. Um, maybe it's a hidden option, maybe you can request it, because they most certainly use sofas and some of their other floor plans. And since this is like a, let me kick my shoes off. Since this is like a seven foot long, basically true u dinette, even with the cushions still on, I can still fully uh, lay back on this thing. So this is a big adult sized guest sleeper. Um, you know, Maybe you're looking for that extra guest. Maybe you have a grandkid or, you know, you're you're doing the buddy camp and her sister's on the fly kind of thing. And you don't want to double up in the bunks up there in the bed up there. You get the idea. But do you think it's cool, like, just doing a dinette? No sofa? Because the thing is, I will not insult you and tell you. Oh, just pop the table out and use it like a lounge and it's just as comfortable as a sofa. It ain't. It ain't. Anyone who says that, they're full of crap. They've never camped in one of these things for a week. It's not bad. If I had to get through a rainy day, I could certainly pop this table out and I could lounge over here. And the TV is in an awesome position for viewing from this, by the way. Because if you are just over here kicking it in lounge mode, that TV's on a double pivot swing arm. You can swing that thing all the way around. Now, we're going to get a good look at the kitchen from the other direction. One thing I noticed, and I got a better angle at it right now, it's, it's nothing major. I, I It's just a nice little touch. Just a nice little thing. And I actually think that would be just enough for a good nightlight. But because it, it doesn't persist through to the other side of that countertop, you could leave that on to be able to navigate to and from bed, like to the bathroom where we're sneaking a, you know, a bite of some of those leftovers. <laughs> um, uh, but w without like waking people up, without disturbing your sleep. It's not a direct light in your face. And again... Could you pop the table out and use it like lounge mode? Certainly. And when you do that, it makes the whole RV look and feel a lot, lot bigger. But I don't know that everyone's going to be necessarily keen on that. I really appreciate how all the windows in this open for airflow. Um, you see there are uh, bedroom privacy curtains here, by the way. There's like a 50-50 curtain, one on each side. So maybe, I don't know, you just want to like, oh, you know what that could be useful for? Pardon me real quick here. Let's say you, you slide just one of these shut. And maybe one of you stays up later than the other or something like that. Like, I don't know. I, maybe that would work. That is a fairly th thin silhouette curtain right there, though. I'm glad I pulled that. Um, anyway, you get the idea. Now, there's full storage overhead. Uh, they don't have any kind of struts to hold themselves open. Of course, you have the hanging storage on both sides. Um, if you look here, you see household outlets on both sides of the bed, but you don't see them United States bees. Those plugs are actually on these overhead lights, but with the glare coming off of that and the fact that I probably need to clean my camera lens, I don't know if you were able to see it. I don't know if you've noticed from my camera work, I ain't exactly no Steven Spielberg or whatever. So like I said, that light panel does not bleed through onto this side. That TV can pivot around for some evening or morning viewing, as it were. Um... Something else I noticed here. I'm glad I laid down on this bed. If we look all the way up here, you see that above the bed, there is a powered vent fan right there. Now it's the simple four inch fart fan, basically. Um, it might be able to, you know, if you have those curtains shut, <laughs> if it's, it's curtains, see? If uh, you pull those curtains shut and you open the bedside breeze windows, it might be enough just to kind of keep some air moving. And frankly, I'm one of these, like, uh, man, if I want to sleep good, I got to have the sound of a fan. When I travel to one of my sister stores like this, um, I actually, I got one of those like noise, uh, white noise apps on my phone. It's, it's just the only way I can get to sleep. And when I do, I just go out like a light. I used it at home one time because I was having trouble getting to sleep and I wanted the extra white noise. <laughs> my wife wakes up and goes, were you playing that app on your phone? I'm like, M maybe. <laughs> it felt stupid, but I, you know, I did it. Now there's a weird thing here that I've noticed Sundance doing very inconsistently. This is a surface mounted stainless farm sink as opposed to a recessed mounted sink. They're a little bit inconsistent on that. The good news here though, 
is I think that there is enough counter space on this. You know, I've done planking tests and similar floor plans where I literally just laid across this thing and found that there was all kinds of storage. You could do that here. You also notice this one, they did an excellent job of giving us excellent door side. I said excellent too much. You have good window coverage. <laughs> now I wanted to open these all up and give you a nice big wow factor, but kind of like above the bed, these don't have any kind of gas struts. I've also, I've seen people put like one of those little baggage or magnet holdbacks on the ceiling. That would be a really easy mod uh, to make it so that you don't gotta, uh, you, you don't gotta do the, um, well, the, the head juggle. You know what I mean, this maneuver. You know one of these moves when like you're, you're trying to do stuff so you, you hold the door open with your head, then you reach up in here and you grab the thing and then you close it back down. One of those things. We'll call it the nugget juggle. I don't know. I will get, I'm gonna give the massive credit. Serious applause. This is, I think, flawless execution of this rear area. They're giving us extra hanging sort, like a coat closet by the door, floor to ceiling pantry space, and a spot for a big wastebasket. I was in a, uh, a diesel pusher yesterday that ran in the multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars, and it lacked a good space for a wastebasket. They gave you one little one for like a Walmart bag sized trash can. That's stupid for that kind of money. I think Sundance really nailed that here. And if you do really want the little Walmart size, well, I suppose that little pocket could work, but they just, they really used this. Oh, wow, that is deep. They use the space very well in this. That is one of the uh, 16 inch ovens, not one of the bigger ovens, Cougar, uh, Rockwood, Flagstaff, they will tend to do that kind of stuff for you. And I realize I've got the, uh, the dinette open here, so you can kind of take a peek down in that. Now, if you felt like taking the dinette out, since it doesn't seem like there's other options, um, notice how that woven floor is the first thing down. So you could take that out. You could put maybe your own sofa or recliner in here uh, if you're inclined. Now, we're in a Western model today. Um, there's a, a little bit of a regional difference in terms of how people tend to camp, and that affects the refrigerator choice that a lot of people have. So the Western Sundances have a two-way fridge. The Eastern Sundances have a 12-volt fridge. And to my knowledge, there is not a swaption for those, but I could be wrong on that. I see a lot of trailers, and it does get murky at times. Now, the bathroom back here, it's got just enough of the right things in the right places. Um, it's a plastic stool. If you want to upgrade to porcelain, that wouldn't be hard. Um, and I'm going to try something new. Let me know how you like this. Instead of me just showing you a quick little picture of myself on the toilet, here's a video. So what do you have? Nausea, heartburn, indigestion, upset stomach, diarrhea. And you take the Pepto-Bismol. Um, the left-hand side of this was pretty good. But surprisingly, the right-hand side was also pretty good. It was not crappy. <laughs> So let me know if that extra kind of information is helpful. Now, uh, it's a radius shower, a floor plane like this. Um, very few builders have found a way to incorporate a, uh, a, a big uh, rectangular shower in here to give you that extra elbow room. But in terms of headroom... So with the big vaulted ceiling uh, and the skylight, it feels super spacious in here. But if I spin you around like a record baby... You might notice the shower head is on the outside wall of the RV at the lowest point in the ceiling. But you may also notice because the skylight's directly in front of the shower head right here, I ain't knocking my nugget on this thing all the time. I think it's all right. Yeah, like you see, not too bad. Now, you don't have a great deal of towel storage here. I think you could probably, you'd, I don't know if you'd roll some up. Obviously, you can you can hang some towels off that thing. But you don't have a great deal of actual cabinet storage um, in the bathroom area right here. Maybe just another angle on things here for you. Like I said, I had good legroom even with the door closed. That's something I've noticed. Some brands don't give you good legroom if the door is closed. Now, um, with the slide-out closed, uh, something I was a little bit afraid of kind of uh, manifested itself. With that big, like, elevated kind of, you know, bar right there that helps define sort of the bed area from the living and kitchen area, and the big U-dinette in the slide, 
It gets awful bossy, awful. Ooh, I never noticed those outlets before. Huh, I'm glad I pulled that shut. Those were kind of hidden away. Awesome. But what I'm getting at is, uh, unless you want to dive over the countertop, you really aren't getting to the bed. Now, one of the things that's neat on this floor plan is it is a rack and pinion slide. So if you wanted to open it partially so that you could get up here, you could get to your closets, you could pack the RV or unpack the RV without fully opening it or something like that, you could. You should not leave it like that though. So if you're making an overnight travel stop, don't do this. Either open it or leave it closed. Also, a little RV pro tip here for you from your Uncle Josh. Something I was watching for just because it's a lot of experience. I've screwed slides up and we've had to repair stuff before. This, when you have a curtain like this right next to a slide face, even though it has a tie back, I really recommend get that curtain away from the slide uh, while it's closing. If it gets caught in there, it gets bound up. Um, if you're lucky, the curtain just kind of gets shoved outside the camper, but then you've created a space for water to wick its way right through. If you're unlucky, you're going to jam up that slide. You're going to have a slide adjustment. You might screw your slide up. You might screw up your camping trip. I don't know. I don't want you to have that happen. I want to make sure I pointed this out. And if you appreciate how we show you the road mode, the little extra tips and tricks, learning from my stupid mistakes over the years, make sure you like our video and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Now we're a little Peter Parkered in here where I'm at. I can't really get to you from the door side uh, from this angle. We'll, we'll work our way around though. Um, good look on the front of these. Walkable roof, although like I said previously, and, and as you'll see as we go around the back, no ladder. Um, you might notice though again, all power stuff, power tongue jack, power stabilizers, power awning, everything's really push button simple. The short length on this and that lightweight, once again, I think a fantastic pairing for either half ton towability or rough equivalents in the SUV market. If you have a bigger SUV, I think you're, you know, you're going to be able to handle this one just awful fine here. Um, very similar to their cousins, North Trail. They are very good about a monstrously large storage compartment. Now, that being said, this is also part of the reason you can't quite as easily just walk around the bed. Now, I was a little surprised, especially out here in the West, that there's no roof solar on this thing. At least you do maintain that uh, little portable prep plug right there. Uh, although even a small roof-based, um, you know, trickle charger, something that certainly, you know, wouldn't offend me awful much. Now, it's a great extended season coach. It's enclosed and heated down here, um, but they, they don't make any kind of lofty claims about like four seasons functionality. But frankly, folks, unless it's like going to be hard snowing for a while, you're, you're pretty much going to be fine here. And you may have noticed when I bent down in front of the axles, you didn't see a sewer outlet. One of the things they nailed on this floor plan was giving us a single stink pickle deployment station right here. Uh, instead of giving us a gray tank up front and a black and gray or something for the bathroom in the back. That's, that's a very common thing a lot of manufacturers do. Um, this does have one of those handy little cold water sprayer ports. Now, these are cold water only. You're not going to get your hot and cold water out of that. But it's also a little higher pressure. So it does tend to be uh, a little bit more effective at, you know, depending on, you know, what you're cleaning up or if you're, if you're in a fight with the neighbors and you want to spray them in the face, <laughs> you want a little, little bit higher pressure on that thing right there. The exterior of this overall is fairly vanilla as far as laminated trailers go. It's just straightforward. They give you the main features that really matter. But one of the things I don't want to forget to talk about is the Asdell in the sidewalls. Um, it is a single layer Asdell. They're not dual Asdell like say a, like a lot of your Coachman laminated products. So just the layer directly below the fiberglass is Asdell. And if you're not familiar with what that is or what it does, it's a composite resin instead of wood paneling just below the fiberglass. The glass itself is actually laminated to um, what's effectively mostly melted pop bottles. So God forbid there's any kind of leak, water intrusion, whatever. It takes a lot more time for the skin to delaminate uh, away. Now, once again, starting from the entry door, you have four campsite windows over here. It gives you some excellent campsite window coverage, but this one is going to force me to, to whine and moan about the uh, outside speakers being mounted all the way up to the roof, where the only thing you can do is crank it up to 11 so that you can hear your freedom rock, you know? I will give them credit though. 
I am very glad to see that they did um, vent their stovetop hood so that you, when you are cooking, you can actually exhaust that heat outside. But speaking of heat and outside, once again, giving you that kind of, huh, think about it a little bit further information. I don't mind so much when there's a furnace vent on the door side of the RV, because if it's hot enough that you're running the furnace, you're probably not hanging out outside too awful much. Maybe a little, certainly, but not, not I don't think all the time. You do need to be careful in the summertime though of the water heater because that will be in use and that will be warm and that's right over here right under the awning. So kind of keep that in mind a little bit. Well, the, the store manager just called me and said, uh, are you done yet? We're leaving. <laughs> so I gotta wrap this up. Check the link in the video description for pricing and availability. Hit subscribe if you appreciate the fair way that we showcase these things for you. And when you're ready, we're ready at Bish's RV. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and I gotta go everyone. Bye.